It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Roman mythology, Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, Norse mythology. What exactly do they have in common? For starters, all of them share a divine pantheon within their mythologies. Now before we get into more detail, let's first define what exactly is mythology. Because mythology has many different definitions depending on the site and the dictionary you use. According to Britannica, myth is defined as a symbolic narrative, usually of unknown origin and at least partially traditional, that esquimally relates actual events and is especially associated with religious belief. It is distinguished from symbolic behavior called in ritual and symbolic places or objects, temples or icons. Myths are specific accounts of gods or supernatural beings involved in extraordinary events or circumstances and a time that is unspecific but is understood as existing apart from ordinary human experience. You're probably thinking to yourself, well geez Tyler, what does the Norse myths, the Babylonian myths, the Egyptian myths have to do with the Bible story? Well for starters, and not a lot of people don't really know this, but there's actually hints of polytheism throughout the whole entire Old Testament for the Bible. And so throughout this video, I'm going to explain why exactly I think there's polytheism within the Bible itself. In Genesis chapter 1, we do see the word Elohim that's being used. Now, the word Elohim is traditionally translated as God for most English Bibles, but the actual meaning for Elohim means more than one God. And now according to most Christian apologists, they will use Genesis chapter 1 verse 25 as evidence for the Trinity, largely because they suggest that that part actually refers to angels and it also refers to of course like the whole entire Trinity, right? But at the same time, we do know that during the Iron Age period, that roughly the people during the time period that composed those books were not necessarily believing the idea of a trinity because we do know that basically such people back then were actually basically polytheistic. In the ancient Canaanite religion, the people back then worshipped a host of different gods. The head god was basically El, the second head god was Ashura, who was the wife of El, and was also the goddess of fertility. There was also Baal, who was the god of the storms, and there was also a host of 72 other different gods within the divine pantheon. There's a book that's called Stories from Ancient Canaan that goes into great details about the various activities that the gods have done in the past. The following quotation comes directly from the story that's called El Stricken Game, where El and the gang get crazy drunk in a party. El slaughtered Game in his house. Game in the midst of his palace invited the gods to the choice cuts. The gods ate and drank, drank wine until they were full, knew wine until they were drunk. Moon set his body down like a dog. He called beneath the tables. The gods who knew him prepared food for him, and the one who did not know him beat him with sticks beneath the table. Estar and Annette he approached. Estar he had a stake prepared for him, and Annette a shoulder cut. The gatekeeper of El's house rebuked them, not prepare a stake for a dog, nor prepare a shoulder cut for a hound. He rebuked his father El as well. El was sealed. El was sealed in his drinking party. El drank wine till he was full, knew wine till he was drunk. El went to his house. He reached out his court. He smeared him with crap in his piss. El collapsed like a corpse. El was like those who go down to the underworld. I find it so fascinating just how humans these gods are. Like many people say that we're made in the image of gods, but really what we do is make our own personal self-projection on ourselves to those gods to have these kind of personalities just like humans. But uh, what's also fascinating to me too, besides the fact that they were having a party in the ancient stories, is also that the storm god Baal also died and basically rose from the dead way before Jesus Christ. We arrived at the lovely place at the beautiful fields at Death's shore. We came upon Baal. He has fallen to the ground. 
Baal the Conqueror has died. The Prince, the Lord of the Earth, has perished. Lift Baal the Conqueror unto me. Son, the God's Taurus obey. She lift up Baal the Conqueror. She put him on Anet's shoulders. She brought him up to the heights of Zabhan. She weeped from him and buried him. She put him to a great pit in the earth. She slaughtered sixty wild oxen as an oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughtered seventy pile oxen as an oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughtered seventy sheep as an oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughtered seventy deer as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughtered seventy mountain goats as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughtered seventy asses as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. But if Baal the Conqueror lives, if the prince of the Lord of the Earth has revived, and the dream of El the Kind the Compassionate, and the vision of the Creator of the creatures, the heaven rained down oil. That I will know that Baal the Conqueror lives, that the Prince, the Lord of the Earth, has revived, and the dream of El the Kind the Compassionate, and the vision of the Creator of the creatures, the heavens rained down oil. El the Kind the Compassionate was glad. He put his feet on the soul. His bow relaxed and he laughed. He raised his voice and declared, Now that I can sit back and relax, my heart and sight can relax, for Baal the Conqueror lived. The Prince of the Earth is alive. But Tyler, what about the man God, the Bible? I mean, surely he has something to do with this, right? In Genesis chapter 2, the phrase that's being used is Yahweh Elohim. Now, in this context, Yahweh is a reference to the deity, the God of the Bible, and Elohim refers to that deity, and so it's actually in the singular in this particular context. Now, what's also interesting to me is that the origins of Yahweh and the Bible is particularly unique. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3 it says Yahweh Shabbat. Now what exactly does Yahweh Shabbat mean? Now the word Yahweh refers to the deity and Shabbat refers to armies of hosts. And so basically he's basically calling the God like a God of the armies or a God of war. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 it says that Yahweh is a man of war, that Yahweh is his name. In other words, it seems as though that the God of the Bible was originally worshipped as a type of war god. But the question then becomes, how do you actually connect the God of the Bible to a pantheon if there's some sort of textual evidence to support that statement? God takes his place in his own assembly. He pronounced judgment amongst the gods. I say, you are gods, you are all son of Elion, you will surely die like humans and fall like any prince. Elion is just one of many names talking about El, the high god, and so what he's trying to say right here is that he's referring to Yahweh as like one of many of his sons. What is also fascinating is that the god El combined together with Yahweh to make one super god, because according to Exodus chapter 6 verses 2 and 3 it says, And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. Remember when I said earlier that Ashura was the wife of El? Well, after that fusion with El and Yahweh together, Ashura for a short period of time became the wife of Yahweh. Not too long ago, we found an ancient artifact, and that ancient artifact says Yahweh and his Ashura, and so the symbols on that ancient artifact represents both Yahweh and Ashura together. To recap everything, the God of the Bible was part of the divine council of 72 different gods. He had a mom, he had a dad, and much later on, he had a wife, but gradually over a period of time, more and more ideas about this God had developed in more sophisticated ways to the point that they call him invisible because he actually manifested in the physical before but not anymore. And so the ideas throughout the years of the God of the Bible drastically changed during that time period and it continues to change to this very day. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.